Hollywood. It's the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for coming into the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together and talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Several of you have sent me this article from the Wall Street Journal's magazine. It's called Smart Money. And they have a website, smartmoney.com. I am a Smart Money subscriber. It's one of the magazines I recommend to you boys who want to learn how to start investing. It's a good one to get started on. It's easy to understand. Doesn't make you feel like a dope, though. And um, for those of you who call me all the time and say, why do you insist on prenups? What's the big deal? Those of you who are in lust and you think it's love and you want to get married to your high school sweetheart and it's the most perfect, wonderful love that's ever been invented, uh, you guys are the perfect couple and you will be the perfect couple till the end of time and at your wedding when you're 21 years old, you'll be freeing the doves and you'll be uh, drinking champagne and riding around in the wedding limousine and you're just going to be happy ever after because you two love each other so much. It's just the most amazing love, love like nobody else has ever known in the entire history of love. It's just an amazing love, a love that will live forever. That's you, right? So why would you need a prenuptial agreement? You love birds. All right, boys. Listen up. This is from Smart Money Magazine. It's called Women Are Seeing More Parody in Divorces. Parody, they call it. So you know there's some chick in there who's an editor. There it is. In the not-too-distant past, Joe Cooper hyphen Ellis. That's trouble right there when they've got a hyphenated last name. Joe Cooper hyphen Ellis's divorce from husband Peter might have debted her the house and some paltry monthly payments. But in the 20th, are you listening, boys? This is very important. In the 21st century, the math of divorce is drastically different. In court in Vermont, Joe not only won $10,000 a month in alimony and child support, but also, pay attention to this please, Peter's entire retirement portfolio and $1.2 million worth of his unvested stock options at the software company where he's an executive. Granted, it says here, Peter won't need reservations for the poorhouse. He commands a salary in the mid-six figures. Still, he's going through post-divorce financial trauma. He says, they took my retirement, my pension, my 401k, and all the cash. I didn't even think that was a possibility. For as long as divorce has existed, men have griped about their divorce settlements. But in reality, they've typically come out far ahead financially. No longer. Boys, are you paying attention to this? Let me read that last line again for emphasis so you hear it. For as long as divorce has existed, men have griped about their divorce settlements. Well, in reality, it says here, they've typically come out far ahead financially. No longer. Today, women are closer than ever in achieving what they're calling parity and then some. Thanks to shifting cultural attitudes and a judicial sea change, courts are putting a higher price tag on what the non-working or lower-earning spouse, usually the wife, contributes to the marriage. 
Judges are granting more alimony, putting more assets in play, and increasingly requiring husbands to pay their wives' legal fees. And, and, <laughs> for men who expected something more favorable, the experience is about as uncomfortable as a colonoscopy. As Washington, D.C. attorney Sanford Ain observes, the husbands are more nervous and the women are more confident. From the woman's side of the negotiating table, the response understandably is, it's about time. Statistics have long shown that divorce is an economic catastrophe for women, especially mothers with dependent kids. Which gives you an idea of how much money women spend. Because if women were doing great when they were married, and suddenly it's an economic catastrophe. Uh, clearly, it's because they're continuing to spend, but they don't have the income they had before when daddy was going out making all the money. It says here, today there's greater recognition of the economic value of stay-at-home motherhood and of the sacrifices women make when they stop working. Women who do work outside the home still make only 74 cents for every dollar men earn. Jesus, stop quoting that inaccurate figure that is based on very bad mathematics and we've talked about that many times says here only 12% of wives make substantially more than their husbands well <laughs> and those women are hideous <laughs> just tell the truth so it's no surprise that it's still the man writing the checks in most divorces but guys, some guys being blindsided by how much bigger those checks have become the shift in split up, split up economics has its roots in the 1980s when academics began focusing on the divorce wealth gap, noting that after divorces, men's net worth typically rose while women's dropped. Yeah, my net worth has gone up every time I've gotten a divorce because I'm making less car payments, because I'm not paying for groceries, because I'm not paying the same amount for utilities, because I'm not spending the same amount going out to restaurants or going on vacations. I'm not spending the same amount on gifts to family members I don't know and will never meet. Of course my net worth is going up. And of course her net worth is going down because now she has to reach down into her purse and pay for all that stuff, whereas before all her money was mad money. Of course that makes sense that a man's net worth goes up and a woman's goes down after divorce. You bet it does. Which is why you should never get married in the first place, because women drag your net worth down. That is what they do. Says here, such research helped push states to adopt the equitable distribution statutes laws that make uh, most marital property subject to division, even if it's held in the husband's name. As a younger generation of judges came to the bench, the judiciary began to embrace the idea that the existing system was unfair and to change the rules accordingly. In past years, for example, courts would look the other way as husbands starved out their wives by cutting off funds, leaving them unable to pay for counsel. Judges would award women as little as $75 for legal fees, barely enough for a consultation with the cheapest attorney in the phone book. These days, we wives get much more ammunition with court-awarded fees, sometimes reaching seven figures. That's seven figures for your soon-to-be ex-wife to pay her attorney to screw you. More important, equitable distribution laws open the door for courts to consider a wide range of assets, stock options, future earnings, privately held businesses as shared marital, quote-unquote, property. Courts have also recognized that homemakers earning disadvantages often hurt them later in life because they contribute less to retirement plans and the Social Security system. Why don't they just put a little money away? Why don't they get a prenup and demand a certain salary for running the home? Because then we would see what whores many women are. And then we would see how marriage is just legalized prostitution for so many of you girls. Women don't want to put a dollar value on this. They want to say it's priceless until they get a divorce. Then they put a dollar value on it. Says here, that's why in many contemporary cases, the biggest assets under dispute are sitting in 401k plans and IRAs. 
In 2006, the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers reported that almost 80% of its members saw an increase in prenuptial agreements in the previous five years, a predictable response to ballooning divorce settlements. Prenups can often become power plays that let the richer man keep the upper hand. <laughs> but the best and fairest agreements allow spouses with deep pockets to protect assets they cherish while still providing security for the one of the supporting role. Ugh. It's increasingly common for prenups to stipulate that payouts increase with the length of the marriage, by which time the lesser earning partner has proven to be more than a gold digger. Right. In theory, good prenups also ensure that wrangling over money won't add to the emotional strain of a divorce. For similar reasons, mediation is an increasingly popular alternative to litigation. By the end of a divorce negotiation, says Manhattan attorney William Beslow, husband and wife are, quote, like fighters coming out for the 15th round, too weary to throw another punch, or they're happy to have some kind of contract in place to stop the fight. The message you boys need to be getting out of this article is this. Women are getting more and more in divorces, and they're getting things you never even thought somebody would fight for. They're getting your Social Security that you'll get paid after you're 65 or 67 years old. They're getting your 401K. They're getting your IRA. They're getting your pension. Not to mention that they're getting your stock options. They're getting half or more of your businesses. They're getting your real estate. They're getting everything you have. You, at the very least, need a prenup. But, of course, I continue to say this story only strengthens my resolve that you can't get married, boys. You cannot get married because this is what you're facing. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. How's it swinging? Uh, not swinging right now. Just kind of hanging, uh, hanging flaccid right now. The Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5-800-TOM. So I read you the article from Smart Money, boys. Brendan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Doing great. You know, uh, I have a question. Um, I'm glad you brought this whole subject up. I'm right in the middle of kind of getting into like a little business adventure with my father. What happened was me and my brother bought some commercial property. And uh, we're kind of been sitting on it. And we're ready to try to develop it. But my brother's kind of made some other choices in his life with financially so i was thinking about bringing my father on board on the title and trying to develop that way because i don't think i can probably qualify for construction loan and i was just kind of curious because he's kind of hung up on getting married and his whole thing in his late 50s going into his 60s he doesn't want to die alone this whole thing but his relationships have never really worked out well and, well uh, you you either have to insist that he has a prenup or he's off the the deed uh, or the title or the other uh, possibilities, you have to find another way to uh, to get that money guaranteed to you. Okay, there's no way I can do maybe like a uh, an LLC or something like that. We put I, that I'm not, no, you're asking me. Or? You're asking me a legal question now, and uh, don't okay, be a, yeah. don't be a cheapskate. Call a lawyer. No, no. Yeah, okay. I was just kind of curious. I mean, I, I don't definitely know. don't want him to get into. You know, he doesn't want to do prenups. So. Well, I'm, you're asking the right question. I'll give you credit right. for asking the right question, but you have to ask the right person, and that's a lawyer. Okay. So you need to talk to maybe a real estate attorney about that. Yeah. Well, I'm just glad you brought this whole thing up because, you know, I've seen my dad get, you know, reamed over a little bit and uh, quite a few friends get reamed over. And I'm just glad you brought this whole thing up today. You know, I was just kind of going over this stuff today about this whole you know, financial thing and just glad what you, you know. I mean, women, you women are getting their claws early. into 401ks and IRAs and real estate you bought years ago that you forgot you had and stock options and uh, you name it. I mean, suddenly you find yourself retiring and some chick you haven't seen in 30 years is laying claim to your Social Security payments. Exactly, exactly. You know, and that's one thing I'd never want to do, and that's bringing up all the time. Or, I, by it's the way, good. pal, you don't need to get married. Right. You don't exactly. need to I, get I, married. I, I believe that 100%. You know, I mean, Every time I see a story like this, it's like, why are guys falling for this? Don't get married. Say no. 
Exactly. You know, and I'm just, you know, appreciate everything you do out here, you know, for everybody on the radio, put all this information out there. Yeah. Just hope everyone kind of, you know, abides by the rules and goes by it. So thanks a lot, Tommy. Appreciate it. Brendan, thank you. This is McKay on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tommy Kins. I'm so happy to talk to you. And I just wanted to say thank you for um, doing this segment today because I've never really understood exactly why you told men not to get married. But now I get it. This is exactly why. Women on the offensive end of these prenups are, they drive me crazy. And I don't get it. And I'm 22 and I can honestly say I will never get married. Ever. Well, as I always tell women on this show, there's a benefit to women to get married. Look at all that stuff you can get. You can get a lot of cash and prizes when you leave. That is true. It's like a, it's like a, like a game show. But who wants to do that? Who wants to be that? Uh, by the way, just so you know, it. here's how it works. Let's say you're really mad at your husband, and you mm -hmm. decide you're gonna just get, you're gonna get him. You're gonna nail. Him. See, you could see it, be in the living room of your home and have sex with his best friend right there, and he walks to the front door and he sees the two of you going at it. Okay. Right. Then you could file for divorce and then take him for everything he's got. Yeah, it's very backwards. I agree. That's how it's it works. System. Yes. Agreed. Well, thank you so much. You make um, so much sense. I love it. Thank you, McKay. Bye-bye. Appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Daniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Daniel. Hey, uh, let's get a quick question for you. Um, what do you think about uh, vagina mode? Is it going to keep getting worse in the near future? Or yes, yes, I do. Better? I think it's got to get worse. But again, the the way to make it get better is if men boycott marriage. Yeah. But your radio, your radio uh, is actually helping a lot in that. <laughs> that will solve the problem. If less men get married, laws will have to change. If women want us to get married, they're going to have to pressure their legislators to make laws that are more fair to men. But right now, it makes no sense for men to get married. No sense at all. Yeah. I appreciate it, Tom. Thanks for answering my question. Daniel, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing today? I'm okay, Matt. Uh, um... Tom, I uh, I listened to about 10, 15 seconds of the show right when I got in my car today, and I said, holy, I, you didn't say a word about uh, where it came from, but I immediately recognized it. I said, Tom's talking about this smart money article. I picked up the phone and called you in and finally picked, was, was confirmed on the phone line. Um, I'm going through a divorce right now myself, and uh, I, I've actually I'm, I'm a uh, I'm a lawyer who's done some practice in family law, so I've seen this issue from a lot of different sides, but none as stark and as uh, as jarring as as going through it myself. And the conclusion that I have come through in in now going through this process and doing a lot more uh, detailed legal research in the fact. Laws before you even get married, what you're what you are saying essentially, and you've mentioned this uh, in, in in not so many terms, but is I uh, with this with this wing I I the red no what you're really saying is I hereby agree to subject all of my worldly belongings to the insane whims and compromises of 400 years of of uh, partisan. Uh, agendas being pushed through into law, and it's going, and I agree to have that presided over by an indifferent public servant who makes the same money whether he destroys your life or not. I or, mean, God, are, or even worse, one with an agenda, like a feminist judge or somebody who's female and feels sorry for the chick you married or whatever. Uh, you don't know who you're getting. You don't know who's going to take control of all your wealth, everything you've ever worked for. And, and Tom, in in see, all right, there's two histories kind of in in our common law system. One is legal, and the other is equitable. And here in American courts, they're combined. Legal is, hey, you have to do A, B, and C, and D results. Did you do A, B, and C? Okay, then D. If not B, then not D. And we don't care what kind of insane repercussions that creates. Equity means, hey, go ahead, and let's all hold hands and do what's fair. And that seems to you know, it hurts our feelings less because it seems like it creates less extreme results. But what you do is you say exactly like you just mentioned, hey, uh, in, in, hey, judge with an agenda, here is full reign to do whatever the hell you want. And that is exactly what family courts are. Family courts are a, a bastion of equity where the judges have free reign to do whatever they want. I, the, the divorce I'm going through right now, I make my... my 
the, the person I'm getting divorced from whom I'm getting divorced is also an attorney, and uh, I'm, I work for the government. She works for the private sector, so she makes close to double what I make. Nonetheless, and I, I have our kids. I have two kids. I have them 40 percent of the time. She has them 60 percent of the time. Nonetheless, uh, I'm paying her uh, close to a thousand bucks a month in child support. Plus, I'm covering half of her daycare costs. Plus. During the pendency, while I'm waiting for the trial, I get to continue to pay her car insurance. I get to continue to pay for her car. I get to continue to pay for her cell phone. Whatever the status of the bills was when... By the way, the had you just had kids with her and didn't marry her, all you'd be paying is child support. That's true. That's absolutely that's absolutely true. So for those of, for those of you out there who think... Uh, you know, I, I, I have to have kids. There's, there's no prerequisite. And, and since... Since I've, I've, I've gone through this experience, and frankly, since I started listening to your show and kind of come to these conclusions uh, about marriage, in dating after the separation, it's amazing the reaction that women have when, when you know, they start talking about marriage and you just flatly say, look, no, I'm, I, I would never do that. Well, why wouldn't you want to? You're just jaded because you're divorced. And it's like, look, number one, and number one, all you're doing is, as I said previously, is saying, hey, uh, you know, feminists with an agenda. Here's all of my bank account numbers. Have have fun. The other thing is, and this is something I haven't heard you mention. But I've only been listening a couple months because I've only been a market that has you. Is that all of the non-material benefits of marriage accrue to women? It's it's. I mean, think about it. If you hear, if women hear that one of their friends is getting married, it's oh, Susie's getting married. Isn't that great? Let's all go spend money on crap and get drunk and on our own. When you hear one of your buddies is getting married, it's like, hey, hey, dude, congratulations. That's great. Oh, man, can you believe he's going to marry her? Without exception. And that scene is, I think that's, I think that is the seed that would make a great screenplay. Like, no kidding. This is what really goes on. Let's look at the conversation of a guy's buddies when he announces he's getting married. I can honestly say, uh, and I've been around 33 years, and so for the last 10, I've seen people getting married. Uh, I can honestly say I don't know a single time where two guys talking about one of their friends says, hey, man, that's great. Phil's getting married. I'm really excited about that. Because it's not. You're like, dude, he's wow, he got her. He got him. She, she got him. No, it's not great. And guys have got to stop doing it. And, and you're a perfect example. Here you are having to pay all these expenses of your ex-wife. Uh, plus, you pay her child support. You could have had a kid with her, not married her, and then you just pay her the child support. And that's it. Done. It's terrible. Thanks for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's uh, Carrie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Great. I just wanted to say that I, as a female, am a big proponent of the prenup agreement simply because I'm heading into a field that's going to be rather lucrative for me, and I need to protect myself as well. So... I mean, I'm not anti-marriage. I don't know if I want to get married now. I'm only 25 years old. I mean, it's too young to be thinking about all that. But I think these poor guys are getting screwed. You know, they work their asses off to develop these pension plans, and they get taken for all their work. I, I really, I, I think guys have no idea. Well, what do I need to protect? I don't have anything. Uh, you, you don't have anything, but every, you know, just about everybody I know contributes to a 401k at work. Or, oh, I do. Or they have a Roth IRA or something like that. Everybody pays into Social Security, and we'll get that someday. Well, guess what? The person you marry can lay claim to all that stuff if you get divorced. Exactly, and I just think it's easier. I'm somebody who's pro separate checking accounts pro everything that way when you get out you get if you get out you get exactly what you came in with and nothing more nothing less and i think everybody you know if women want to stay home and be the homemaker and everything that's all well and good but i'm sorry i am somebody who's always been taught from early on if you want something in life you need to work for it you need to have a job and you need to take care of yourself so i don't think these I don't think anybody, men or women, should be screwed out of something they've rightly worked for for all these years when they get divorced. Carrie, thank you for that. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Rachel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom, love your show. Thank you. I had a quick question for you. I yes. am a married uh, woman, obviously, and I make significantly more money than my husband, and have um, gotten a very nice four hundred and one k myself. Four hundred and one k myself, and I was wondering if. If we ever did get a divorce, if 
oh, if I could possibly get screwed by the alimony problem. Oh, you or, well, yeah, you could. I think it's less likely, but yes, you could. Okay, because I was just I was curious about that because I certainly don't agree with the way the laws are now, um, and I didn't know if it applied the same way to a female as it does to a male. Well, of course, on paper it does, and it's supposed to. Uh, and uh, how many years you've been married? Uh, four. Right, because I tell everybody, you know, in California, when you get to ten years, alimony is forever. Right. Right. Okay. Okay, well, that's interesting thought. Hopefully, uh, your female listeners will learn something from you. You better make sure this is the guy you want to be buried next to. <laughs> and if he isn't, it's time to get out before it costs you any more money. Just remember, you will pay a day of alimony for every two days you stay with him. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for the information, Tom. Rachel, I'm here to help. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-866. We don't dump you because you're a slut, God damn it! Men live for sluts. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Coming to the to you from the lot at Paramount Pictures here on Melrose Avenue in Hollywood. That's where we are. And we're talking about an article several of you sent to me from Smart Money Magazine. It's at smartmoney.com. It's called Women Are Seeing More Parity in Divorces. And uh, just more evidence that guys, at the very least, have to have a prenup when they get married. And frankly, I think you shouldn't get married at all. Women now are more successful at getting your 401k, your IRA, your stock options, ownership of your company, your real estate, and a bigger chunk of what you make. It's getting worse, and this article proves it. It's what I tell you all the time, boys. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jacob, hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Good, good. Quick question for you. I work at a uh, Fortune 100 company, and every company I've ever worked for prior to this has made me sign an arbitration agreement that says that for whatever reason, if I choose to sue the company, that I don't get to go in front of some whacked out judge. I get to go to an arbiter who's going to e view both sides equally and fairly and do what's right for all. How come this concept has not been applied to marriage? Well, there are arbitrators uh, for marriage. There are mediators. Uh, that does exist. But again, the problem is... Uh, you never know what, what is fair. You know, do you really want to put all your assets up in front of a complete stranger and let them decide what it's fair for you to keep? No, I, I'm a young, successful guy. I work hard for my money, and I'm not hurting at all. And so, I'm real interested in this concept. Is this something that is well, you have to see? The thing is, you do disclosed in a in a prenup. Or well, something? that's something you got to talk to an attorney about. But I would tell you, why do you need to get married? Well, I. <laughs> I'm I'm not yet not even close to it. Why would you ever why would you well why get, would you but, ever need to get married? You know, I, I my some of my folks and some of my family members got married off shotgun weddings and uh, I'm not a big fan of getting shot. That's the only circumstance I could see it coming down to right now, Tom. Well, uh you know, don't be knocking up any chicks. <laughs> no, that that's the furthest thing from what I want right now, Tom. But don't do it, okay? <laughs> I, I, I that means it's, I, it's I, condoms 100 percent of the time. There's one in the car. There's one in the kitchen. There's one in the bathroom. Just about every room in the house. And if a chick tells you that uh, if the condom slips, she'd have the baby, get the hell out of there. It means she's trying to get pregnant. <laughs> I first time, long time. I understand. I'm with you, Tommy. I just wanted to know about the arbitration, friend. That's the deal. Talk to an attorney because uh, there is mediation, and that is a provision you can put into a prenup. But I don't know the details. I don't know how enforceable it is. So you need to talk to an attorney about that. I have 12 great attorneys, and I depend on them all the time for information like that. And it's a good idea for you to start doing the same. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Tyler on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Uh, um, I just want to say, hasn't it become apparent to everyone in the United States that... Uh, we have the symptoms of a sick society when we have all these frivolous lawsuits. Um, the government's kind of so involved in marriage that I believe a lot of marriages just happen out of women, like you say, 
uh, trying to score some money, you know, trying to get a gold diggers. And um, what's happened is we have all these these children, you know, these illegitimate children, whatever, however you want to call them, uh, that don't have two parents. And I do believe in monogamy because uh, monogamy, I think, think it has some benefits for society, such as, you know, STDs, uh, kids that are raised with two parents, a little bit more stable. I believe in that. And I want to say that... Well, that's a benefit to others, but that's not a benefit to a man. You're right. You're right. But, okay, um, as far as, like, marriage as an institution, aren't there different rules across the world? I mean, if you got married in Japan or China, don't they have... It doesn't matter where you get married. It matters where you get divorced. That, exactly, okay? Uh, our divorce our divorce laws need to change. I mean, somebody has to do something because... Well, they're not going to change right, until... They're not going to change until a significant number of men refuse to get married. Yeah, you're right. I'm, because I'm I guarantee you, women are not reason. women are not political. But if if women all of a sudden turn around and they couldn't find any men to marry them, they'd suddenly find out who their senator and congressman are. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I'm, I'm starting to. Get, I think women are starting to get more political. You know, because we have like Hillary running for uh, president. That's that's like a new thing. Obviously, they're getting a little bit more into politics because they see the benefit of being politically influential. And they're, they're using. By the way, I don't happen to agree that women are getting more involved in politics, but that's beside the point. Well, okay, then what is, what is it? Just men aren't, what, are we not uh, motivated enough to go out there and change it? Because, I mean, obviously, supposedly we have all the power. Well, keep in why mind, we, keep in mind, keep in mind, the majority of voters are women. But the reason for that is because women live longer than men, and the older people get, the more likely it is they vote. Well, <laughs> I'm going to have to make sure all my bros get out there and, and uh, vote. Maybe I'll throw some frat parties or something and go out and start petitioning for my, my brothers to get out there and uh, do something about this. Because, I mean, both my parents were married for 30 years. That doesn't make it. You know, times have changed. You're right. Uh, and I'm definitely not going to get married. Cause I'm not. I'm in the medical field. I'm not going to screw myself over. Yeah, you know what happens when you have a medical practice and you form a medical corporation? That's a company. And if you're married when you do that, guess what? Your wife could lay a claim to half of your business. Suddenly you've got that partner who is your partner long after you're divorced. Yeah, and I already have enough problems with uh, lawsuits and insurance. You know, I don't, I don't right. to deal, deal with uh, women on top of that and getting you know, all my assets taken away from me, which I, I, I agree that today's society, it, it, it is suicidal. It's financial suicide to get married. And I think that everyone needs to, to know that. I agree with you on all of that. Kara on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey. Hey. How are you doing? Great. Well, I completely agree with what you're saying. I think girls are completely scandalous. Um, I moved here from Kansas four years ago, and I live in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. And all the girls out here are just out to get married and take guys for their money. And it's ridiculous. Um, I'm, in the, I'm dating a lawyer right now, and I told him... We get married, I'm signing a prenup. And he insists that I don't sign one, and I want to, and he doesn't get it. Who does he think he is, Paul McCartney? I don't know. <laughs> He's not incredibly successful, but I think he will be eventually, but I'm not going to be that girl. I completely support myself, take care of myself, and do a great job at it, and he just does not understand why I want a prenup. What? Girls don't understand that prenups can work in their favor also. Right. Like, are they not smart? Uh, the, well, uh, that's my point. I've said this many times. I mean, uh, you know, uh, prenups don't say necessarily that you're getting absolutely nothing. For example, if you're going to be raising a man's kids, you could say in a prenup, I want $40,000 a year put aside for me because I'm quitting my career to raise your kids. Well, and not only that. You could put that in there. Now, the guy might say no and then not marry you, but at least if you get married, you know what you're going to get. It's in writing, and then later on, there's no debating it. And I completely agree with that. And in addition to that, you know, he owns a home and in Scottsdale and all this stuff. I don't want any part of that. I don't want to be that girl that takes a guy for whatever if it doesn't work out. I'm not like that. And I, I get pissed off at all these girls out here that are so plastic and BS that... Give us good girls back. Well, there, it's not, it has nothing to do with geography. Um, what it has to do with is whether women are super attractive or not. What happens when women are well, super I would like attractive? To say I'm super attractive. Well, again, though, you left, as a super attractive woman from Kansas, you left Kansas and you left all the women who look like sausages behind in Kansas and you went to Arizona where the hot chicks are. So anywhere there are hot chicks, this is what you're going to see. 
I I'm sure it. women in Kansas wouldn't do this because most women in Kansas, you wouldn't want to look at them. Well, yeah, and most women in Kansas aren't going to get anything either. Right. But, you know, it's just, it's frustrating. I'm 26 years old. I'm a good-looking girl, and I just want an honest, good relationship without any of the financial ties. I, I don't understand why it's so difficult. I uh, believe me, I completely agree with you. I wish I met more women like you, Kara, but I don't. Christina on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, I just wanted to say to every man that is listening and every woman, a prenuptial agreement and a marriage, well, first of all, a marriage is a legally binding agreement that you have with somebody. It's not just I love you. Love is not enough. When you're getting married, that's when everybody's on their best behavior and everybody's happy-go-lucky. At the end of it is when you're going to see their horribly bad side. So when I hear guys saying, oh, but we love each other, we're never getting divorced, that is just absolutely 100% foolish. Every man, first of all, needs to get a prenuptial agreement as well as women, just for the reasons you just stated. You can write anything you want in a prenuptial agreement. That way you know there's no fighting at the time. You guys can sit down like rational humans and write down what's going to happen if something goes bad. That's just like not buying life insurance because you're not going to die prematurely. Number two is... I am a huge proponent of this. Keep your finances separate. That way, if you want to, if you're a guy and you want to go blow 200 bucks at a club or something like that, you don't have to come home and hear screaming because you just spent that much money. If you're a woman, you want to go buy a $200 pair of shoes, you don't have to hear it from your husband. If you keep your finances separate, you have no problems. When you go on vacation, pay your own way. That's how it should be. Period. End of sentence. Done. Anybody who does it any other way is just foolish and setting themselves up for disaster. I agree with you. Darren, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Are the ratings? My paycheck? Excellent. Wow. How about your... Oh, never mind. Hey, uh, I just want to say um, I'm more successful now um, having been married, or actually being married as I am now, in, and with kids than I ever was, and I probably ever would have been had I not... Why would you say uh, that? Well, um, you know, basically, before I got married, I was kind of just... Uh, I don't want to say a loser, but I didn't really have any drive. I didn't really have any ambition. I was going to class. I was, I was at college. I wasn't really focused on anything. I met my future wife, who actually happened to, um, this was uh, back in Tucson. I was living in Tucson. She had just graduated from medical school out there. And at the time, I was working like a jan as a janitor, as an OR tech in, in a local hospital out there. And I had you know, no drive, no desire, no you know, whatever. And anyway, I got my, my girlfriend at the time pregnant and I realized that I had to go back to school. So that being said, that was kind of the, uh, um, I guess, the catalyst to get me back and, and, and get the degree. Finished the degree, got the master's, all while, while my wife was working and, and supporting me while I was doing this. And now I make more than I probably ever thought I would make. And, you know, seven years later, I've... That's because you have to. Well, had I not got... Well, listen, if I would have taken your advice, if I would have been listening to you... Ten years ago, spending you know forty bucks max on a girl and not, not getting them pregnant and not ever desiring marriage. It's not about you know. I would I would have to agree with you that the majority of people out there have no right to be married and shouldn't be married. And and a lot of women out there are the, are the wrong person to be marrying. And unfortunately, um, a lot of people fall into that predicament. And you know, it, it, the result is is you know divorce and women taking you know half the guy's money however if you look at it as like a business where you you know you part if you're a sole proprietor of the street, you take all the risk you do all everything all on your own if you have partners in your business then you know it becomes successful you have other minds thinking about things you have other problem solvers it's the same thing with marriage if you find that's not necessarily true that isn't well that's not necessarily true for everybody but in my case is absolutely 100 percent. that's just because you were a complete loser and then you as part of being a loser you knocked up your girlfriend <laughs> and then you you had to uh step up to the plate and you had to learn how to make more money to pay for all this so that makes me a loser because i take care of my kids and no no you were a loser to begin with okay and uh the, the fact is that you haven't getting your girlfriend pregnant was part of being a loser Okay, so you, this is what made you get up off your ass. The fact that if you didn't get up off your ass, you would not be able to support your kid. Well, either way, I mean, the end justifies the means. Not necessarily, because you can well, have this just case, it has to. how much more this, money this do you case. have now than when you were a drifting loser? What, I'm sorry. How much money is actually yours that you have now, as opposed to when you were a drifting loser? Well, I mean, if you if the 
if the laws go in, in, in reverse, it's a two-way street where I get half of her stuff, she gets half of my stuff. Apparently, I'm married to a physician, so, you know, Grant, I get that well, income as well. Good luck on that. Income. Unbelievable. The Tom Likas Show.